to be alongside Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial educators with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. We have a great program lined up for you today. We're going to cover a lot, as we always do. First and foremost, I want to tell you about the courses that the foundation sponsors. And these are great ways to start thinking about retirement and to get prepared. It's all about having confidence in retirement. And you can do that by registering for these upcoming courses. Now, these are held at local universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, and Michigan State University Novi Campus, also held at Oakland. Your choice. You can go in person. There's also an online version, whatever your comfort level is. You can call today to get registered, 800-240-8981. Again, 800 240 89 or visit the website to register, retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk, Paul, it's great to be back with you. Good yeah, to be it's back. Good, it's good to be here. You know, good I want to here. talk about something that I think, by and large, gets ignored in the financial services industry. And that is these myths and misconceptions that people have about retirement planning. This gets kind of swept under the rug and people just move along as if there's nothing to see here. But these myths, Kirk and Paul, these misconceptions, boy, they can trip us up in retirement, can't they? They can. And, you know, it is a topic that I feel like we sort of talk about quite a bit and we sort of reshape or just adjust our language. But we're essentially often saying the same thing, which is these whether it's general rules that are currently being promoted as solutions for retirement or some of these myths and misconceptions about how of of strategies and ways to retire that used to perhaps work no longer works or just a myth or misconception that our industry created to make their jobs easier. I mean, a lot of it is based upon trying to create a one size fits all sort of playbook strategy for retirement. You know, it's interesting. You're absolutely right. And we, we've touched on these subjects. Every show we touch on them a little bit. I, I think it's a good idea just to actually just really focus in on this And I was sort of doing some research over the weekend just about retirement planning. I can't tell you how many websites basically were like five easy steps to retirement planning, three easy steps. Everything was easy Easy. steps to retirement planning. Sure. What an oxymoron. I mean, truly an oxymoron. Well, well, Paul, to be fair, right? And we should start the show with this. And I think we say this in every show because it is helpful to understand what you have and where you fall in terms of the norms, right? So- I do think the five easy steps to retirement may be applicable with some for, for the average retiree because the average person, the average baby boomer who retires will retire with about $200,000 saved for retirement. We also have like, a, it's over a third of our baby boomers getting 90% of their income from social security and that's it. That's all they have. So when you have, when you have fewer resources, easy can work. And some of the general rules can work. I think the disconnect, and it's really, and I will maybe explain throughout the show why the industry, the financial service industry doesn't distinguish between average and what can be one size simple versus the rest where it needs to be more customized and how you are an outlier and there's no easy steps to it. They don't distinguish between those two groups and and I'm going to do it right now. Look. The average is $200,000 and easy steps may be fine for the person retiring with $200,000 saved. But those of you who have more resources, you've saved, you have 500, a million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million. There is no easy way to do, well, I guess there are easy ways to do this, but what we find is that those people end up way under living what they otherwise could be living on. They don't have the freedom to just spend like they want to spend in retirement, and they don't often spend as much as they can spend, and it's because they're using general rules. And it's one of the reasons 10 years ago we started the Retirement Education Foundation to teach these courses at all the major universities. These are eight-hour courses taught over two days or one full day. And all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend one of these courses. And you can go to the courses at the major universities, but we're also streaming them live so you can stay in the comfort of your own home because of COVID. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. Retirementplanningedu.org. You know, dude, 
I'm going to pull a Kirk. Go, please. Okay? I'm going to pull a Kirk. You're, in, you're going to interrupt me. You're going to yeah. be loud. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Okay. But I'm going to say, you're, you're, you're actually being kind here. When you say that the five, six easy steps is intended for the average retiree. Okay. That's not, that's not, you're being nice. You're being nice. Let's be honest. Because if you have $200,000, you don't really need five easy steps. Okay. Shit. At the end of the day, these are truly intended for people who have, I mean, who have, you know, two, three, four million dollars. There's still an expectation you can do it simple. And you can't. I, I, you can't. But I think that is the industry. That's the industry standard. So, so look, this is what we're going to talk about today. We're, we're going to talk about some of these mis misconceptions, general rules that, that shouldn't apply to you if you have resources saved for retirement. And we're going to explain why you shouldn't use these strategies and where you're going to run into problems. Many of the problems aren't going to be about running out of money, Paul, right? It's, it, it, for those of you who have resources, that isn't our, as a financial instructors or in our private practice, that's our not. That's not typically our biggest worry. Most of you will self-regulate enough to not outlive your money. It's you're going to over-regulate yourself and underlive your what you could otherwise be living. You're really going to leave your surviving spouse in a in a pickle. I mean, from a tax perspective, from a Medicare cost perspective, you're going to leave the surviving spouse in a bad position that you could have avoided. You're going to leave your children with a with a lot of outcomes that they could have had better outcomes with and you're just not going to have the freedom it's it's about the psychology a lot of this is about the psychology of retirement to be able to have the freedom to be able to spend and do what you want and not let short-term market events get in the way and so it really starts with education we're going to push you like we do every one of our shows we never sell anything on the show what we try to push and convince you to do is to spend seven eight hours taking a retirement planning course. This is an advanced course that's going to step-by-step, not easily, (laughs) teach you what and how to build a retirement plan and what is a retirement plan and some of the things that you can benefit from a retirement plan. It's eight hours taught at all the major universities. We're streaming it live now because of COVID if you want to stay in your home. And you mean, all you need to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we're back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Always great to be alongside Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and really great topic for you today. We're exploring and really debunking some of the biggest myths and misconceptions around retirement planning. Believe me, you do not want to be caught falling for some of these things. It it could be detrimental to your retirement. The other thing that could be detrimental is not having a plan for retirement. And it all starts with getting educated. We want to let you know that the Retirement Education Foundation hosts courses throughout the year that you can attend. And this is a real deep dive into what it takes to plan successfully for a modern retirement. You can get registered today by calling 800-240-8981 or going to the website retirementplanningedu.org. And did you know the foundation is on Facebook? That's right. You can get more information and be kept up to date on everything the foundation is doing by going to Facebook and simply liking Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about these myths and misconceptions. What are some more of these that you see the general public falling for time and time again? Here's the biggest one, ready? It's, and and we've been hearing it since we were young. We want to protect our principal. I listened to three or four it was like, I think, four shows this past weekend on the radio. A couple of them were local people, a couple of them national people. And consistently, the message was, is trying to preserve and protect your principal. And I, I got to tell you, again, if you're the average retiree who's going to retire with $200,000, that's all you have. Well, I think you better protect your principal. I, I would agree. You need to protect your principal. But the person that's retiring with two, three, four million $4 million, 
It's a choice if you choose to protect your principal. Not a need. It's a choice. If you are protecting principal, you're doing it for your children. I want to translate, Paul, what protecting principal means. And then maybe, Paul, you'll tell us why this has been brainwashed into our heads. We have been conditioned by the financial service industry. This rule, and here's, here's the deal. Protecting principal means if I retire with $2 million, I want to die with $2 million for my heirs. I want to leave $2 million to my children or my loved ones. And I'm, I'm confident that isn't what everyone wants. We have some people, legacies of priority. Okay, different discussion, different strategy, different planning. But for many of you, protecting principle is about not outliving your money. So, so let me finish and then you can jump in, Paul. So really the right answer, the right correct statement should be a controlled spend down of my principle. Just don't let me outlive it. This is, look, old people aren't cheap. They're not. They're scared. They don't spend because they're scared. They're protecting their principal. Even when they don't, you think of mom, dad, 80, 85 years old. They won't spend any money. They're going to leave you millions of dollars. Not because they wanted to, because they've been trained. They've ser- they're still serving their money. That's all they know. They've done it their whole life. Protect that principle. We can't see it go down. It's okay for it to go down. Here's the, pro- here, here's the problem. I think we need to clarify one thing, though, Kirk. This all stems from an industry that doesn't plan, right? right? And if you don't plan, if you don't plan, if you have just a bunch of investments in the stock market, right? At the end of the day, if you don't protect your principal, at the end of the day, you run this big risk, right? It, 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 You're it, right. It, it, so this idea that you don't have to protect your principal only works, or a controlled spend down only works if you actually plan out your retirement, right? If you don't plan out your retirement, then it's a little different story. So the problem is we have an industry, most people are listening today, they don't have a retirement plan, right? So they don't know how to do a controlled spend down. It's something we talk about. We spend a lot of time in the class, obviously, t- yeah. teaching people. But the average consumer out there, the average listener, they can't do a controlled spend down because they don't have a plan. Paul, here's the thing. And I know we're and, – and I think maybe maybe that's the next segment we talk about is – what is a plan, right? Because I'm sure many of our listeners think they have a plan because their advisor or broker told them they have a plan, but they don't. And it, it, it's important. I think clarifying that's going to be really important. So you, you got to stick around to the next segment because we're going to tell you what a plan isn't. And then we're going to tell you what a plan is. Right. And it is important to distinguish. We know that it's less than 4% of everybody of all retirees have a plan, a true retirement plan, not a investment plan, but a retirement income plan. And we're going to talk about that next segment. So, so, I think- so why, but Paul, Paul, sorry, why is it that our industry has worked for years hard in messaging protect your principal? What are we, what are they doing? Why is that promoted so much? What is their motivation? Because well, there is a motivation. Well, of course. So, I mean, another way to answer it is, is what does it take to do a controlled spend down, right? A- anybody who's listening, if they knew that they can control their spend down and never outlive their money, would agree to it. Yes. The problem is nobody understands, people are listening, understand how to do it, because to do that requires spending a lot of time and sitting down and planning out your future income plan, right? It takes time. It takes energy, it takes resources, and most advisors, they don't want to spend 20, 30, 40 hours doing this, so they need a simple way to plan for people's retirement, and a simple way to do it, if you don't spend down your principal, you're not going to outlive your money. That's it. It's it, it it's self-regulating, right? Yeah. They know, Paul's got it, our financial service industry is a business model built on scalability. Right. They want to scale. They want to meet as many people as they can and sell as much as they can and move on to the next one. It's the same reason why why you listen to some of these shows on some of these channels, even our channel, who will say the next 10 callers gets a free roadmap to retirement. Ten roadmaps they're building a week with their staff of five people. They're building 10 roadmaps. 
That's 52 weeks. That's 520 plans. Six easy steps. Six easy steps. Seriously. So you got to appreciate. I mean, in our private practice, I know we don't talk about it much, but our private practice, when we take on a client, and, I, and I've been tracking this lately, Paul, it's closer to 40 to 50 hours is what we are now spending to construct a retirement plan. That isn't a scalable business model. It's not transactional. It is a very challenging business model to execute and not most profitable. So, but, but with it, you can control your spend down. But if you do it right, you can control your spend down. And so that's what we teach in the class. That's why it takes eight hours. Folks, if you think you're just going to a basic financial literacy course, you're mistaken. This is an advanced course, 200-page textbook. We are going to move fast teaching you a lot about taxes. Tax is a big variable. Income planning, protecting the surviving spouse. There's so much to learn. We barely scratch the surface on the eight hours. And you have to make a $29 donation to charity to attend this course. It's taught at all the major universities, and we are streaming it live because of COVID. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul in just a moment. This is the Retirement Education Hour here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I want to tell you about the foundation's courses. They help. They hold courses all throughout the year. These are taught at local universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. And it's your choice, either three hours each day for two days, or you can do a one-day, all-day course. That's about seven to eight hours. There's also an online version if you'd rather learn that way. To get registered, make sure you visit the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. It's $49 per couple. And for listeners, we have a discount, $29. Now, all of that goes to charity, which is awesome. That's your investment to making sure you're ready to go for retirement. And make sure you follow the Retirement Education Foundation on Facebook so you can stay up to date. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about myths and misconceptions. And these are really, they're actually dangerous if you think about it. Some of these are are things we just believe. We don't even ask deeper questions about them. Let's talk about specifically what a plan is. What do we typically hear about a plan? Well, at the core, this is it, right? I mean, it, I, and Paul once Googled, what, what did you say? You once Googled retirement planning and you had over a million o- hits? Over a million hits, correct. Right, right. <laughs> and I will tell you, it, it's less than 1% of, of advisors around the country actually do reti- real retirement planning. So, Paul, let, let's talk about what is not a retirement plan and then talk about the differences and show them what, a, or tell them what, show them, sorry. Tell them what a retirement plan is. Go ahead. So, What is not a retirement plan? So most of you have a probability study, right? You probably have a you know, 20, 30-page book. That's your retirement plan. It looks really pretty. And it probably has a dial, and it tells you the probability of success. Maybe you have a 70% probability, maybe an 80% probability. And it's all based on a bunch of investments. So often, Kirk, we sit down with people and we say, show us your plan. Typically, they show us this really beautiful binder with this probability, this this dial, and a bunch of investments. And that's what people think is a retirement plan. There's a there's usually a spreadsheet in there with like a 4% rule, yep. taking out 4% yep. a year to live yep. on, right? Right. And that's it. And usually, usually they'll give them this advice, defer taking money out of your 401ks and your right. IRAs right. until you're forced to, if you can, right. at 72 years old. And then Which, by al- the way, is the total wrong and advice. And then there's, there's also in small print, Yep. I, actually, yes. I hate to say, I, I have a good friend who came to my house recently and showed me his retirement plan. And I pointed out the little fine print, <laughs> which, you know, of course, the fine print says, they, they, you know, this probability, they, they want you to understand all they're doing. It's basically they're going back and back testing, right? That's all it is. All they're doing is back testing. The reality is at any given time, depending on the future of the stock market, we talk about this in terms of sequence return, at any given time, you may be part of that probability that fails. They don't want you to focus on that. They want you to focus on the probability of succeeding. Yeah, that's not a plan or a pie chart showing you what percentage of your money's invested where. 
showing you fixed income and then showing your RMDs coming out and when to take Social Security. And look, here's the deal. To construct a retirement plan, there is no software that does it, right? You can't, we can't do 10 free roadmaps to retirement a week. Can't be done. I mean, I would have to have a staff of 50 people to do that literally in our private practice. It takes professionals with CPAs as part of that professional team, 40 plus hours to build a retirement plan, which is going to include every single year for 30 years where you're going to take your income from at what age to eliminate risks such as sequence of return risk, to minimize taxes. Taxes is a huge variable. In our private practice, our average client's saving two to $500,000 a year of taxes over their retirement, which extends the life of their money, extends how much money they can take out. There is so much opportunity if you know when to take money from different accounts at different ages to Roth convert, reposition assets, when to take money out of your fours and your IRAs, and then to know how much you can take. The majority of plans that are being built in our private practice right now for people who want I want max income, give me as much as I can, don't let me outlive my money, is 7 8% a year is what we're able to take out with zero chance of outliving their money because of the way the plans are constructed. A plan has to give you the flexibility to pivot when we have a recession every four to seven years. We're going to have major market events three, four times in retirement. You have to have the ability and a plan to pivot to the right accounts to take those money in those volatile markets. And if you do it wrong, or that volatility happens early in retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. People know that. That's why they're fearful and they underspend. How many of you listening right now are planning to live on seven to 8% a year in retirement? How how many of you would like to, but how many of you are really going to feel comfortable? See, Paul, this is psychology 101. It is People don't understand once they retire how much anxiety they're going to have about money, right? I'm sorry. I've been rambling. I know you've been wanting to talk. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. So I think just one thing that's important to differentiate is is that those probability studies assume the best, right? They focus on the 80%. You know, you have an 80% chance that you won't outlive your money, and that's what they want to focus on. Sure. When we plan, we model assuming the worst. So we want to make sure. And when we teach in the class, we teach that. And, and, and we teach people how to construct their plan, assuming bad things happen. Because here's the thing. If, good th- if everything's good, great. But if something bad happens and you're in your 70s and you're not working, at that point, there's really nothing you can do about it. You have to plan for the worst. Paul, how do you think as a psycho- uh, recovering psychologist, as you like to say, and I know we're running out of time this segment, I think we should come back next segment to the myth and misconception around investments will determine how comfortable you are in retirement, how they perform. That's not it, right? So so if you have a prob- probability of success of 80%, are you going to feel comfortable taking more than the 4 or 5% they allocated? Aren't you going to focus on, aren't you always going to focus on, you're vulnerable. Well, well actually, I'd say you should. Focus on I mean, that. you should, and that's the problem, right? Because they don't have a true Because they don't have a plan. plan. That's right. So, so the this class. Is, yeah, this is why you got to come to the class. And again, I, I don't know, don't wait until you're retiring. Five to 10 years before retire. it's never too soon. You, you got to come to this class. It's seven to eight hours of education. How do you construct a retirement plan so you can get the most out of what you've saved and created? All you have to do is make a $29 donation charity. We're teaching it at basically all the major universities, and we're streaming it live right now because of COVID online, so you can watch it. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800 800- Two four zero eight nine eight one. We have much more of the Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Stay with us. We're glad that you're with us today for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Now, we've been telling you about the foundation's courses. We hope that you're already registered. If not, here's two easy ways to do it. If you're online, just head over to retirementplanningedu.org. Here's that address again, retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register 800 240 
8981. These courses are streamed online so you can watch and and get educated in the comfort of your own home or you can attend in person and they're taught at major universities here around our community. Either a one day or a two day course, make sure you register today. I think this may be one of our most important shows as we talk about myths and misconceptions today about retirement planning. Specifically, I want to talk about the myth that I think permeates through a lot of people as they get closer to retirement. And that is the general rule people believe actually drives success in retirement. Let's do this, Kirk and Paul. What's the myth? And then what's reality? Well, I I think what happens is people have been conditioned to uh, save money. Uh, We like to refer to it as serve money. They've been serving money for their entire life, saving it for retirement. And when they've served that money, what has made money grow for them is two things. They save more and they invest more. Investments have driven driven the success of how much they have saved for retirement. Investments is what people unfortunately believe it is, is what's going to drive their success and performance in retirement. And there is you're not going to believe us just listening to an eight minute segment here. When you come to our eight hour course, when we show you so many comparisons of people having the same average rates of returns and having so many different outcomes, some people outliving their money, some people having millions left at the end using the same average returns. But when you're taking money out of those, out of those different investments, is what drives your performance in retirement. It is the plan. It is the income. It is different than when you are accumulating your wealth because you're never taking money out of it. Your money can go up, down, whatever it is, the average rate of return is going to give you the same outcome. But an average 5% return or an average 8% return in retirement is not going to give two different people the same outcome, even if they both have an average 8% return. I know people struggle with this and And it's where people get in trouble because they're so focused because they're still a serving money and they still think it's the investment that's going to drive their performance. And it's not, you know, I think, I think what drives this myth is similar to all these myths, right? And at the end of the day, we, we work in an industry that number one, uh, promotes its value and its fee on investing, right? I mean, if you think about it, what do most advisors do? They invest your money, right? And that's how they get paid, right? So, of course, if there wasn't a lot of value to it, if they didn't have some magic secret sauce, no one would go to them, right? So it's not surprising that most consumers think that's what drives, you know, retirement plans because that's what our advisors in in our industry are telling people. I totally agree. That's how they promote their value. That's how they they justify the fees they charge. (laughs) You're 100% right, but- Here's what I would encourage people to do. If you want to understand what we're talking about, go to our website, retirementplanningedu.org. And we have have a white paper on something called sequence of return risk. Go look. It's free. Go get the free white paper. And then we've created a free interactive calculator where you can play around with people who have average rates of returns, whatever you want it to be, 5 7%. And depending on when the returns occur and when you take your money out, you're going to get different outcomes. And it helps to illustrate because it's hard to understand what we're trying to tell you without some sort of illustrating, something illustrating to show a comparison. Right. And it's it's a major part of the class. Right. Now, right. We're not, to be clear, let's be clear. We're not saying investing is not important. I mean, sure you, it is. We're not saying that. No, I mean, it's probably fourth on the list of 10 things for retirement planning. Fourth. Right. We're talking about specifically retirement planning, right? We're talking yes. about coming down the mountain, right? You're 50 years old and, and, and you know, how many more years are you going to work? We, you know, we call this the distribution and preservation phase of life, right? It, it, it During this phase, it isn't. Now, if you're 30 years old and you're listening to this show, it's a different story. Very different. Very different Paul's story. Right. Here's the other thing that, that make, you made me think of, right, right Paul, is that, and, and, man, I, I, would, I can't beg people, don't wait until you're retired or about to retire to come to this class. Five to 10 years is when you should be coming to this class because you guys, again, general rule, ready? Another myth and misconception. I'm 55 years old. I'm 60 years old. So this is how much money I should have in stocks, and this is how much money I should have in bonds. 
these myths about what your risk tolerance should be based upon your age. What does your age have to do with what do I need to give me what I want in retirement? Your risk should be driven by your needs. What a concept, right? But when you don't know what you're going to need to give you what you want in retirement and no one's willing to really spend the time to show you that, then we fall back to a general rule, which is totally a myth and misconception of how much risk you should have at what age. Warren Buffett says it. I say it every show. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, how does it apply to you? In other words, if you are 60 years old and you're going to retire in five years and you already have enough to give you everything you want in retirement, shouldn't your risk tolerance look different than the 60-year-old who wants to retire in five years and doesn't have enough to give them what they want? Shouldn't what you want in retirement drive the risk you should take before retirement and in retirement? Paul, doesn't that make sense? Of course it does. Of course it does. But the key... The key is you have to learn how to build a plan, right? At the end of the day, people who are listening have no idea, no idea what we're talking about. They have no idea of they think they if, do. A, if, a, if a retirement plan is an investment, to what is it? And that's the point of the class, right? The point of the class is to teach people how to build a retirement plan, where you're, where, and then you'll see that investments is not the only thing that's important. A here. lot of people listening to our show doesn't think we're talking to them. Honestly, you know, I've saved $3 million, $5 million. I'm very successful in my careers, and I've made my money grow. I'm great at this. <laughs> I don't care how good. We, we In our private practice, who came through our class, by the way, who now works with us, was a pension fund manager at J.P. Morgan, managed billions of dollars. It's not the investment, folks. I don't care how successful you are. You need to spend eight hours in one of our university courses. Just Pay $29, make a donation to charity, and, you, and, and you'll be much better prepared to, to have the freedom you're looking for in retirement. So if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back in a moment. I'm here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Nettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we're so glad you're spending part of your day with us today. Really important show topic. We are debunking some of the biggest myths and misconceptions around retirement planning. Why? Well, so that you can have a very clear and true path to retirement. Um, there's nothing like believing a myth and just allowing that to upturn your whole plan for retirement. We want you to have the facts. So that's why we're doing a little myth busting here on the show. You know, another way that you can get that clear and true path to retirement is by attending one of the foundation's courses. And these are held throughout the year. You can register. They're held at major universities in our community. Simply go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, how about debunking the myth about what is a safe investment for retirement? Well, there's been this rule, uh, it's called the 60-40 rule, Paul, that's been around, yeah, people think it's been around forever. It's, it was really started in the early 90s, and at, at the time, it, it was a very effective strategy for people who are retiring. And what it means, 60-40, is you put 60% of your money in stocks, equities, 40% of your money in bonds, and based upon that 60-40 allocation, you could take your 4-ish four, percent out per year, and you shouldn't outlive your money, and worked very effectively for many years. And the reason it worked so effectively for many years is the 40% of the money you had in bonds performed the best they have ever performed in the history of bonds, right? It, we had the best 30-year run in bonds from the 80s, mid-80s through the mid-2000s, mid-2010, 15. Right, right. <laughs> to clarify. I was going to say, gonna say we're, mean, not, come on. we're not in the mid-2000s yet. <laughs> not yet, but come, we're getting there. We're getting but, there. But, but it, yeah, we got it, it changed. You know, when, so, so the general rule with bonds is interest rates, when interest rates go from a really high level to a really low level, the bonds that you own become more valuable, right? Because you own bonds that are paying a higher amount of interest every year. Now we're in an environment where bonds are really low interest rates right now, historically low interest rates. We call it the war on seniors and savers, right? And 
interest rates are starting to go up. And as interest rates start to rise, we are going to actually lose money in our bonds. And this myth that bonds are so safe really is is being debunked across the industry now. I, I'll give them credit. I, I don't think the motivation to debunk this myth by our industry is is with for good intentions. I think it's self-serving, but they are right. I mean, consistently, if you read articles, the 60-40 rule is dead. Bonds are a volatile, non-safe solution for retirees over the next decade is consistently the message we're hearing. Kirk, I'm going to, I'm again going to say, I think you're, I'm going to pull a Kirk. Yep. I, I think you're being really kind. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I, first of all, Megan, I'm, I like the myth busting. If I, I like that. <laughs> so I want to myth bust this. How many people have their entire investments? And I, I, I have one client who has a million dollars of his 401k in one investment. Yeah. Called a target dated fund. Yes. Okay. So if what you're saying is correct and our industry recognizes it, why is it that he has an advisor has a million dollars in a target data fund, which basically means every year he gets closer to the date that he said he was going to retire. They're increasing his allocation to bond funds and reducing it to equity funds. Well, OK, I, I think it's fair. I think you're right. Those and, and I, I should distinguish. So the Susie Ormans, the Dave Ramsey's, the Jeremy Siegel's, uh, even I, I, I would even argue we're, we're seeing it with. The the general public, I mean, you look at City, J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, they'll all tell you the forecast, the 10-year forecast for a 60-40 allocation is 3%. No, they recognize it, but they don't have a solution. They don't. That's the problem. They may say, well, you, their solution we got a problem. Is take more risk, which or, is or, insane. Or go to cash. Yes. Or go to cash. Is even more insane. Right, right. So that's the problem. They don't have a solution. They don't. So I grant you. you are. I grant you there. But, but you, okay, so but fair. The target, Paul, they, how many people have target data funds who are listening that's all that this is about. It's based yeah. on this myth. They have a 2020 target data fund. That's right. Which is going to be about 55 stocks, 50 stocks, 50 bonds. That's right. Right, because bond you, funds, bond, bond funds, funds, right? Which because you were supposed to retire in 2020. That's what a target data fund means. The year is the date you're supposed to retire, and the closer you get to that year, they buy more bonds every year. You get closer. So a target dated 2020 fund is going to be in the 50-50 range, stocks, equities, right? The crazy part of that is if you look at a 2020 target dated fund over the last three years, you're going to find that that 50-50, 50, 50, 50, stocks, 55, 50 stocks, 50 bond portfolio, is it's over 90% correlated, meaning it performs- Correlated to what? To the S&P 500, all, meaning- All equities. All equities, meaning they performed- almost identical to if you had a 100% equity portfolio. Simplify that. So you aren't getting, so in other words, bonds are highly correlated to stocks right now. And meaning just as volatile. Just as volatile, meaning when the market goes down, we're seeing the bonds going down and going down pretty drastically. I mean, if any of you want to look at your bond funds over the last six months, you're, you're, you're going to see what I'm talking about. They're going to be down. You will have lost money because- the interest rates have crept up. The 10-year went from 0.5 to up to 1.7. I mean, your bond funds probably lost between 5 and 10% over that period of time, depending on what you have. So you're saying basically the, the investment that's supposed to hedge against market risk is just as volatile no. as equities. And, and, yeah. and, and so, so the problem is, is that people are listening are thinking, well, then what do I do? I'm getting close to retirement. There's I want to be problem. conservative. What do I do? I don't have a solution. The, the answer to that, though, Kirk, is come to a class. No, you, you really do. Because, because we actually talk about how do you address this issue, right? In, in, in the way you address it is it's not as simple. So a lot of people are promoting the solution just 75% stocks, 25% bonds. But here's the reality. If you have a 75%, 25, 75% stock portfolio, in a 2008 event, you would lose 43%. We know you're going to panic. You don't even know this yet. Your relationship with money is going to change so much, you don't even know you're going to panic. And you will. I know you didn't panic in 2008, but someone else was paying you a paycheck every month. You're going to panic. 35% of people over the age of 65 panicked during COVID. You're going to panic. So that's why you got to come to the class. Eight hours of education on how to build a retirement income plan, tax plan, estate plan. You need to, all you got to do is make a $29 donation 
You can attend to one of our small group classes at all the major universities, or we will stream it to you live so you can stay home if you're worried about COVID. All you have to do is call 800-240-8981 or go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. And we're back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're glad you're here on the show today. Really important information that we're passing along to you about myths around retirement planning. These are myths and misconceptions you may be believing. And Kirk and Paul says doing that could be detrimental to your retirement. We want you to have a successful retirement. You deserve a successful retirement. And here's one way that you can get up to speed on everything you need to retire with confidence. Make plans to attend the Foundation's courses. These are educational courses held at major universities around our community. Make plans to attend either a two-day course or a one-day course. You can call to register 800-240-8981 or you can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Okay, I've got my myth-busting hat on, Kirk and Paul. You know, there's a big transition that happens on the doorstep of retirement. We're always saving, saving, saving in our working years. And then when you shift into retirement, there is this transition that happens, right? So let's talk about the myth that exists out there in that transitionary period. This is one I really, really bothers me, Paul. This one probably bothers me more than any. This idea, and and it bothers me partially, again, because of what's motivating this myth, right? It's, again, the industry not wanting to plan, cookie cutter, one size fits all, self-regulate, this idea that you're only going to need 78% of your income in retirement. In other words, you have been convinced, many of you have been convinced that you'll need less income in retirement than you need while you are working. And the data does not suggest that. Again, remember, when you hear these general rules, just like this one, they are talking to people that have saved $200,000 for retirement. That's what they have. They're not talking to you that has saved a million or two million or five million for retirement. Folks, you are not going to live on 78% of your income. In fact, 66% of you will spend more money in the first five years of retirement than you did the last five years you were working. Period. End of story. That is the fact. That is the number. In the same study that says you only need 78% of your income in retirement, it gives you that data. You just didn't read the whole story. And you hear experts, so-called experts, quoting that's what you need, and so that's what you hear. You got to understand that study, Paul, a third of the people participating in that study We're only living on Social Security. 90% of their income came from Social Security. A third of baby boomers, that's all they have. 90% of their income comes from Social Security. Well, uh, of course, that's less than what they lived on when they were working. But those of you who have saved, we get people arguing with us all the time in our classes saying, no, we're going to need less. And Paul likes to say, okay, you people living on less, what are you going to do with the 2,500 extra hours that you have spent working every single year? What are you going to do with that time? I think what makes it so frustrating is that when people follow it, they end up not living. Yes. They, they end up not enjoying the retirement, right? They, they way understand they, they what way they understand. could and, and, and charities or children get all the money. So I, I think what's disturbing is to watch people actually not enjoy and and, you know, we talk about the go-go years versus the slow-go years, right? If you don't spend during the go-go years when you're healthy and you retire, at some point, even when you decide, oh, now I'm going to, it may be too late. And that's what's so disturbing. You know, we don't talk about a private practice, but I will say this is the one, if we think about when do we redesign people's plans? Yes. It's almost always because people underestimate how much they want to spend and then they go to retire, right? Yeah. And of course, within six months, they're saying, wait, I I want to take that trip I haven't taken. Yeah, I want to fix the kitchen I haven't fixed. Well, we finally often convince them to stop serving money. It's a habit. You have been saving and serving. This is a long 30, 40 year habit to now watch your- Hard to switch. Spend your money? Goes back to relationship with money, right? Yes. It's It's hard to change your relationship with money. One of the things that helps in our class when we show people 
I think when we show people how much money they're going to be forced to receive in their mid-70s, when they have to take Social Security, when they have to take their RMDs, the required minimum distributions, and then some of them who make the mistake and take the pension instead of the lump sum, they realize, holy cow, I have to take $180,000 or $220,000 when I'm 75 years old, but here I am in my 60s because the broker and advisor told me to only live on 4 or 5%, so I'm only taking, I'm taking 120. I have to take 200 when I'm 75, but I'm going to live when I'm healthiest and most active on 120? Right. It doesn't make any sense. But, here, but Kirk, at the end of the day, if you don't have a plan, you don't have a choice. And if they don't have a plan, there's a risk. There's a lot of risk that they have not addressed, right? Oh, yeah. So all of this, all of these myths, at the end of the day, if you want to break the busting of these myths, you have to plan. If you plan, you don't have to follow these myths. If you plan, you can enjoy the retirement that you want. I would take it a step further. To plan, you first need to understand what a plan is right. and learn how to plan. It starts right. with education. Right. This is the one thing I, I am always shocked at. People, professional athletes train every single day. My son, right? He, he is training every single day, lifting, hitting, catching. He is constantly training. My daughter trains 20 to 30 hours a week. She's 10 years old training for gymnastics. We train in school. We go get educated to have careers. We train to use software, to use technology. We're constantly training. Somehow, we choose not to train at all for retirement and to build a plan. Train. That's why the, that's the purpose of the class, so you can train to be prepared to know what a plan is and how to construct a plan. And it's why we started these courses. We, we started this nonprofit to teach these courses at all the major universities to help people train, prepare to understand retirement so they can have the freedom they are looking for in retirement. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can attend an eight-hour course. You get a 200-page textbook. You can do it at the universities in a small group right now, or you can stay home and we'll stream it to you live. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.